and welcome to another episode of Remember When with Diona Doherty, a podcast where I, Diona Doherty, ask my guests to remember when something happened in pop culture history that had some sort of effect on them throughout their lives that they're willing to share with us today. Um, if you go to manscaped.com, you can get 20% off and free shipping on all your downstairs grooming needs. If you own a pair or know somebody else that owns a pair of balls and need a wee trimming, then you can get your stuff for cheaper by using my code Remember When to get 20% off and free shipping. Uh, tickets are also flying out for Bridesmaids of Northern Ireland in the Opera House and Home Alone in the Opera House. Um, half of the nights roughly are almost sold out. So if you want to get tickets, get them now or else I won't eat. Thank you very much. Uh, my guest today is TV, radio, Northern Irish legend, it is, of course, Pamela Bonte. Please Pam let, let her children eat. Make sure her children let eat. Let my children eat. I only have one. <laughs> and I have three stepkids, so I guess that's like one and a half. Then. Yes, yes. Could we call them one and a half? Yeah, but they're, they're, they're not sort of old enough to be put up working still, chimneys and things and well, stuff. Well, they still eat, uh, but... Yes, I'd love that. Would be great. Uh-huh. Although, if there's no Wi-Fi up there, they won't go. Oh, they nip up and fix it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like honestly, if like if there's no Wi-Fi, uh-huh. we my stepson's like we got a. I hate going away in caravans. My husband absolutely loves it. He like was one of those guys who loves like holiday in a caravan. I'm like that is my idea of hell. Uh-huh. I so, was probably in the car behind swearing at him. I yeah. I, I, no, not a towing caravan. Like a oh, proper camper van. Like a holiday home, like, like uh, what do you yeah. call them? Yes, mobile. Uh, no, the, the the mobile static statics, caravan, the mobile home that goes nowhere. Hate that. Yeah. Hate them. Yeah, it's like no, I hate it. It's like living inside one of those like units that you put on the ferry. Although, have you seen some of them now? No, not ours. No, <laughs> but yeah. But- I mean, they are unbelievable. Yeah. It, 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 it's, they're like... Some of the ones in and, Port Rush are like yes. nicer than my house. T- t- totally. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, you, the, the, one of them would cost, you know, a decent price. You'd pay about 80 well. grand for yeah. one of them. It's absolutely wild. Uh-huh. But Sean and was... And then just think of the money you could make letting it out to all the golfers who come over. But, and the place that I, the place that we got a caravan, so we got a caravan very briefly, and it was absolutely crap and it was so old and it was the worst thing ever and there was the wi-fi was awful and the kids hated it of course they were like why are we here yeah. there's no wi-fi I'm bored yeah. yeah they were like remember playing outside and uh-huh. they were all no that's something people did in the olden days um but, so we didn't stay there very long but the rule was that you couldn't let it out oh, as i can't even side hustle but could you not just say but have you met my extended huge family yes from america yes who come over to stay yeah 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 who sometimes yeah. don't know my name exactly <laughs> yes they, they struggle to pronounce it but we're all related yeah, yeah. they've yeah. never been here uh-huh. yes. yes i mean i could have been a little bit more crafty i probably wasn't crafty enough early days yeah um <laughs> do you that's not something you enjoy caravanning is it I went camping once with in some, a tent. Uh, yes, mm-hmm. in on Corfu Island, with sorry where Corfu. Oh Corfu. Yes, this is in no, on no, 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 oh no, oh no, gosh, no Corfu with three other friends from sort of school days. Yeah, and I had started working in downtown radio at the time. They were students. Yeah, I could only stay for a fortnight because I had to go back as I said to them, and earn money mm-hmm. to pay tax, to pay their student grants so they could stay an extra two weeks on Corfu. I mean, that's so yeah. nice of you. And I decided there and then I was not built for camping. No. No, no, no. It was, when I mean, you very rarely found a shower that worked and yeah. the, the campsite was just gross. It was horrendous. We escaped the campsite after the first night and we just pitched our tents wherever we found. You know, the Australians tour the world in converted ice cream vans. They, they they just do they they make oh, them like do them all up do yes. them all up yeah, yeah, and yeah. I mean and there was one that we came across that just said no this is not a <laughs> ice cream van um, and so we would camp people then, just constantly looking for a whoopie and they're exactly. like this is where yeah, we live <laughs> exactly and it gives a ninety nine you might get more than you bargained for yeah. um, and you would go, <laughs> go down to the pool at, you you'd park by a hotel or you you camp up near a hotel and you know the showers they have by the you're meant to use before you jump in you had to rinse take yourself your off. off yeah we would come sort of sundown, we would sort of loiter and then run in with our shampoo, quickly wash our hair and escape before the security got us back up to our tents. And uh, You were roughing it. it. Roughing it. And the best shower I had was an old fella with a bucket who just squished us with water. And I bet you he absolutely loved doing oh, that, Pamela. totally. totally. <laughs> he it was, was like, just... I'll help you as I do. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> what a creepy Whatever old man. Whatever it was in Greek. Yeah. <laughs> the universal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I went camping like once or twice with Sean. Sean likes to believe he's like this Bear Grylls sort of guy. He loves the... Out- I've and- met Sean. Does he, do you not have a mirror? <laughs> no, yeah. No offence, Sean. Yeah, no he's not very Bear Grylls, but he likes to think he's like he's like at one with the outdoors and loves uh-huh. camping and all. And the only time, he's like got this obsession with camp, I'm going to go camping by myself. I think he like wants to bucket list it off. Okay. I honestly think he just wants to get rid of me. And he's like, I want to do a night by myself, like out in the mountains or something. Uh-huh. And once or twice he's tried it and he has been back at our door by about half eleven. It's like, like when the kids get the tent and they pitched up in the back garden. Oh, yeah. we're going to camp for it. Yeah, nine o'clock. They're oh back my. in. Can I come do you know back what's in? The most disgusting thing about camping is the condensation inside a tent. Oh. That gives me the book. That wetness uh-huh. that you know has uh-huh. come out of everyone's mouth. Yeah. That is just people's slabbers. Well, the only other times I've camped was Dublin Horse Show. Right. Um, we used to go down, a friend of mine's sister was competing in the horse show, and we would go down as her grooms, right. allegedly. Um, and as all the grooms were getting up to go and work on the horses, we were what coming in. What do you mean in, grooms? Looking after the horses. Cleaning, oh. Grooming them, you know, looking at them. Yeah, I thought you were yeah. like, like groupies. No, no, no. You just have to look after the horses. But we okay. pretended we were, but we weren't. Yeah. Um, so we could stay on site in the in the um, RDS site. Mm-hmm. And so as all the grooms were getting up to go and look after the horses for the competitions that day, we were coming in from the Leeson Street nightclubs. Right. And then we also discovered that if you run out of milk, you can put vodka on your cornflakes. <laughs> oh, God, little that things, is... Yeah, little I things was a, like that. I was about to say, or you could milk the horse, but that no. doesn't work. No. Well, well horse, horse milk is something else. And then the other time I camped was, I did a charity event in South Africa a few years ago. And one of the things... For sure someone who doesn't like to come. I'm like, you seem to have left half your life in a tent. Yeah, uh, <laughs> another story about a bow and arrow, but that was another... Yeah, yeah killed, my brother nearly <laughs> killed me, but anyway... Um, we were doing a, a big charity challenges in South Africa for one of the charities I'm involved with here, Belfast Activity Centre. Mm-hmm. And we were camping in the great outdoors, having trekked these mountains. And the guy who was our tour guide, he said, right, we, we've had our bonfire barbecue, great crack. He said, we're going to have our um, award ceremony. Went, oh, mm. All right, OK, fine. So the award was, say... Um, and the award for the nicest black shirt in the room goes to Diona. So Diona's handed That's, a yeah. Jägermeister and you scull it. And the award for the pink T-shirt goes to Pamela. So Pamela did it. So bottles of Jägermeister were hoofed that night. And I went to bed and three o'clock in the morning, absolutely no idea what it was, but going, isn't the sky amazing? thought, I haven't had water and I'm usually good with water. Downed a litre of water. Went to bed. Of course, half an hour later, the liter of water needs to come back out yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, oh, Old school alarm clock. Oh. You know, do you remember that ad that was on the telly for Tampax, where there was the light on in one toilet and not on the other, and all the mozzies were in the toilet with the light on, and the girl wanted to get rid of the mozzies, so she switched the light off and put them on in the gents. Oh, so they all right. Over. No, that's well, good. It, it, the the toilet complex was over, way over that way, and I thought, oh no. Could I be bothered? Mm-hmm. Don't know if I could. I thought, oh, I'll just go behind it. Oh, no. So anyway, I took myself to the toilet complex. Next morning, got up, and my mate who had been sharing the tent with me, who, thankfully, she's allergic to alcohol, said, did you hear those noises in the night? I said, oh, it might have been me going to the loose. But no, no. Sure enough, round our tent were massive, big cat footprints. <gasps> there were mountain lions in the air. Could you imagine if, if I had been pay? having a wee whiz behind the tent? And come face to face. Because I hear tigers love pee. Well, well, the lions, are, they're, they're lions in South Africa. Oh, right. Yeah. Tigers are in India. Uh, 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 You'd have had your arse spat off you, Pamela? Well, well I, there would probably have been more than pee. <laughs> so there you go. So that's, yes, there would have been. Uh, so that that's me in camping. I Did know you... I like a five-star hotel. Yeah. With a butler. Yeah, without lions. Without lions. And uh, you'll have like a lion... Like rug, well, I don't know. Don't fake know. one, yeah, fake one, because you can trip over the head. Oh right, <laughs> Isaac. No, she's a real vegan animal activist. You'll, mm, it's their dead carcass head that bothers me yeah, when I when trip I'm, on my stilettos. Yeah, I'm bad enough falling over bedspreads and ending up in hospital. Do you in remember Spain. what award you did one at that? If you got, did you get an award at that? Oh, okay. Yeah, I couldn't remember. Would it just yeah, be silly ones? Yeah, totally silly. All absolutely daft. Have brushes. you ever won an award in my life? I have. 
I Should was I know? absolutely stocked and shunned recently to be hosting the Women in Business Awards. Yes. And then I asked... Oh, that's for right. A, and I got... I, I was told it was going to be a Lifetime Achievement Award. I was told it was the woman sitting beside me at the table as Roseanne Kelly was reading out the award and I'm sort of going smugly thinking yeah. she doesn't know. And then Roseanne said something about the under 40 years in the media. I went, uh, <gasps> and, and I did do that. Off a bit, and so I was totally stocked and shunned for that. How exciting! And I won the and and the fact I was hosting the event. Yeah. Another one that I won was the um, Celebrity of the Year, which I was really thrilled to win at Where the Oscar Tatler Awards. Well, and I was also hosting that. So, so did you give to give I to yourself? To, I had to get down off the stage as the nominations were announced and then somebody else announced them and then I had to go back up onto the stage uh, and receive the award and then continue it's like on proposing presenting. to yourself, it isn't was, it? It was weird. It was so weird. Like, I was nominated. Do you remember the In Magazine Awards? Yes. I was nominated with Sean for Celebrity Couple of the Year, which was hilarious because it was so long ago when absolutely nobody knew who we were. I think they ran out of people that who were couples. <laughs> and Jamie Donan and his wife was also up for it. That would have been a toughie. Well, they won. No. Which was so shit because he wasn't even there. Yeah. And his ma came and picked up the award, which I thought was a loophole. I was like, they've only given that to... I mean, did they... So that we were at the after party and one of the girls who worked for magazines was half cut and she was like, well, listen, we thought he might come. That's <laughs> why we had him winning. Uh-huh. But if, you, if we knew we'd have had you to win, I went, no, we wouldn't have because Jenny Curran and her fellas also up for one <laughs> and they'd have won instead. Yes, because I won cover of the year at the In Awards. At the In Magazine cover? Yeah, yeah uh. and to which I thanked um, Darren Kidd for his photoshopping right. and my mother for jeans. Uh, <laughs> did you wear her jeans on the cover? No, I didn't. No, no. <laughs> My mother never wore jeans in her life. Did she not? My mother was a blouse and skirt woman. All Old her school. Life. Old school. All her life. Would she have wore tights? Oh, yes. Because you wouldn't have had a naked leg then, wouldn't no, you? Not have... No, no, no. Occasionally, there would have been a naked leg on a holiday. But we, we had a bungalow in Bally Halbert, which is where the bow and arrow came in. Um, the, and and mum would have possibly have worn a pair of nice fitting slacks. Like loose. And a blouse, yes. Aye. Um, or she, or, and occasionally would have gone bare-legged if it was a good northern iron summer. So was she real feminine, is that why? Or is it just the thing well, that it was... It was just the thing. Yeah. I mean, mum was born in 1932. Yeah. And, and, that was just, and her upbringing was, you know, this is the way you do things, dear. And yeah. This, you know, she was brought up proper. And that, that was the way things were done. My, I mean, I, whenever I'm sitting drinking a pint, I always say Edna would be so proud. Of your pint? I, women do not drink pints. You oh. can have two half pints. And in fact, a barman once gave me two half pints because he couldn't, he didn't like looking at a woman drinking a pint. Shut up. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Do you know in do you know the Edinburgh Fringe Festival? Yes. Well, you get these things called two pint stings. Yes. Where it's I've like two. One. Oh, why? They're just like two pints in a big glass. Yeah. So I was there one time and I, so two pints, say a two pint stain is th- four pounds Eighty or whatever, but a pint is like three pounds. Obviously, mm. it's better value. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna get the two pints thing. But I was there one time seeing a show, and Sean and I were like, "We'll just have one because we're not like really drinking tonight." Don't be wrong, I'm not drinking, but I'll have, I have one. A, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those ones. Uh-huh. And I would do and I was all, "Can I get like two pints?" And the girl was all, "Well, it's cheaper to get a two pints thing." I went, oh, "Okay, can I have a two pints thing?" And then just give me another glass, and I'll pour half it in. And she was all, "But I know you're doing, so I have to serve you two pints now and charge you six pound." And I was all, "But." but- but can I just, so can can you pretend, pretend yeah. we didn't have that conversation? Sell me a pint and then after you sell it to me, I'm going to ask you for an empty cup and then I'll just half it. Yeah. And she was like, "No, I can't do that. That's, I I see. I know what you're doing. I know that you want two, so I have to sell her for two. So I had to buy the two for six pound. But you'd have been better off just buying two steins. And oh, had eight pints. Yeah. Yeah, but then we would have Four had pints. two drinks and then we would have been drinking yeah, then. Been, but no, technically it was one drink. <laughs> If it's in a glass, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's if it can fit in, yeah, like a whole bottle, yeah. it's one drink. Correct. I mean, yeah. I, ha- I have the full bottle wine glass. That's a glass. Do you? Yeah. Are you a wine drinker? I, I, I yes. Yeah. And gin. And gin. Beer, cider, um, brandy. Um, I have a fairly substantial gin collection. Right. Um, fairly substantial wine collection. I'm an absolute sucker for a bargain. And a friend of mine is working in Marks and Spencer's wine department at the moment, so she also gets her 20% discount. So I get a phone call going, such and such that you like's on offer. How many bottles do you want? So you're not 
particular about what wine you drink, are oh, you? Oh, I, w- I would be. Right. Yes. Um, well, I know what I like. Yeah. And I know what I don't like. And I know what doesn't like me, more importantly. Yeah. Um. So that that's... And, and I love I love red wine, but red wine's winter. Do you... Winter? Yeah. Really? Yeah, for me, it's do winter. Do you think it's certain... Like, do you know when people go, oh, no, when I drink vodka, I'll start rowing me people? Do you think certain drinks bring out different Pamela's? Not so much different, Pam. Well, you'd need to ask my mates. Right. But they know whenever I've been overserved. Right. <laughs> You've been overserved. Yeah. That is the that is the most like irresponsible sentence, Pamela. Like, you're completely putting the blame on everyone who works in the bar. Absolutely. <laughs> for your rowdiness. No, no. Opposite. I just grin. Oh. They went. She's gone quiet. Yeah. Time for her to go home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. She's about to drift off. Because in the good old days, I would have. You know, I was on the white wine and soda diet and lost two and a half hours. And right. I would know what was in my head. Yeah. But what came out of my mouth was completely different. So now I had there's a, there's an edit facility has been installed somewhere in my okay. brain and it goes, no, you don't want to say that. No, you, you can think it, but you don't want to say it. Do you be at events? Because obviously you're like one of the most well-known faces here and you're so recognisable. Do you be at things and be like I can't really get as pissed as I'd yes. like to oh do you yeah that's so shit yeah but then again I mean th- but that, that's a lovely thing though about Northern Ireland is everyone's gonna very protective all oh, right um we've never had really paparazzi here mm-hmm. and that's why so many film stars love coming filming here yeah yeah, like, yeah. a friend of mine happened to tell us a week after that she'd been showing um Brad Pitt round Queens as you do and I went and you didn't tell us just, oh, no. but people were just walking past going hiya Brad and he's going hi hi." and he, he was like why are people not Brad, hounding yeah. me or he looks like Brad Pitt but what's he doing in Queens why would he be here exactly, exactly but yeah. it's just that's just what you do. good to see you. what about you because yeah. I have always thought surely someone like say Kim Kardashian or Brad Pitt or someone who's uh-huh. like a huge like so famous and constantly followed by paparazzi surely they could get on a flight like just incognito, like put a hat on or just, no, even I think putting a hat on and glasses draws attention to you if you're really totally. famous. Yeah. But if you just came somewhere like here and didn't alert anybody, surely you could just start a new life and nobody would yeah. know. Which Everyone would just be like yeah. that there. That person sort of looks like Kim Kardashian, yeah. but you're not going to think Kim Kardashian's just exactly. but you see, down dumb right? It all depends on the personality. And I mean, to me, I'm, I'm not a reality TV watcher. Near my. So... I did ask somebody once what a Kardashian was. Right. I said, what is a Kardashian? Right. And then I thought, that's my mother's voice. It's just yeah. come out of me. Is that a soft furnishing? Yes. It is. yes. And <laughs> so I'm not big into this. So it's a personality of wanting, like Sarah Jessica Parker and Matthew Broderick were in their house in Donegal last week and then they went and presented prizes to the local GAA team. I didn't know they had a house in Donegal. Yeah, they've had a house in Donegal for donkeys. And they come over all the time. They're just regular people around Donegal. Wow. That's and, wild. Yeah, so they, they just... Love it. Yeah. So if you're on a night out here, you're very aware that you have to, that everyone around you knows who you are. Well, my mates who watch this, they were going, no, she doesn't. No, <laughs> she doesn't give yeah. a shit. No, but and yeah, you sort of, because you don't want to let yourself down. I you know, love t- letting t- myself down. The taxi firms some... will, will tell you, yeah. I'm probably different that once they've dropped me home. Or, um, now, you know, I, I use my bus pass everywhere. It's great. Right. Um, so... I got the bus home from Pride the other day and we had been a tad overserved throughout the course of the day. Um, and I was going out <laughs> for, di- for dinner with my other half that night. I oh, need to send someone up here. Yeah. Um, and and so th- the bus journey w- home was, right, get home, get had to have a wee hours kip. Yeah. And then... A disco out. nap, I a call wee, that. Yes, a wee disco nap and, and set the alarm and up and ready and pretending that I'm absolutely fine. Yeah. Not a problem. And at one stage he did look at me and go... You're pissed, aren't you? Yeah, you're pissed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you know the, like, so obviously the likes of you and Tim McGarry and Barra Best, Frank Mitchell are probably, Olivia Nash even too, like the most recognisable faces. Like people, would you wouldn't be able to really walk down a street without everyone, without many people in that street in the Absolutely. But, but I mean, but people sort of do they, funnily enough, the majority of people go, it's the voice I recognised. Oh, really? I was, talk, I was talking to a lady at the bus stop the other day and... We were just nattering about heading into town, doing and whatever. And I'd, I, I, I was going into work and I was going out for lunch afterwards. So I didn't want to bring my car in, mm-hmm. get the bus in and I'd flip flops and just a wee frock and 
but I had my shoes and everything with me for oh, work yeah. in the bag. And I'd said about, you know, I still got the tights and whatever. And she went, oh, could you not just have bare legs? I said, well, it's not, doesn't look good. And then she said, well, where, where do you work? Oh, right. And I said, well, I, I work in, in UTV. She went, I knew, I knew the voice. That, yeah. And that, that was it. But it was also the... What's Pamela Valentine doing standing at a bus stop in East Belfast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like it's it's like the the Brad yeah. Pitt and Queens thing. Yeah. They're all I know what that yeah. looks like, uh-huh. but should he really be here? Uh-huh. Yeah, I think I I get because you have such a like definite long standing career at UTV. Everyone's like Pamela's UTV life. We all know that that's like your like like the stalwart of that. Mm-hmm. But because I've done like lots of wee bitty things, like uh-huh. there's no like defining thing uh-huh. in my career yet. Who knows well, if ever? But no, but that's also very good because you can turn your hand to anything and you can be just yourself that's what I mean like yeah. I think people sometimes look at me and be all I'm not pigeonholed she, did she did I go to school with her yeah, like yes, it's that sort of yeah. thing do you uh-huh. know what I mean like rather than like or the things that people like the, um, there's somebody who comments under every single one of my videos online going and it's the exact same writing every single time it goes oh wait hold on you're the girl from the lead lad every single really? time and I'm all are you trolling me but in a really like not offensive way <laughs> like, uh, but but through, but through my career it's been um, Connellys of my Connelly, well no that's the most recent incarnation okay. but up until then it's been aren't you the wee girl who reads the news yes aren't you the wee girl does the weather I have very rarely done the weather mm. You've done the sport. Like I was UTV's farming correspondent for four years. I presented Farming Ulster for four years. Did she? Yeah, and I loved it. Um, and then it was when I got the Optilays ad yes. done. Uh, these kids ran up to me. And it's it's funny to see the demographic. Yeah. And there were teenagers came running up to me. Uh, it was All with at, bad eyesight. Like, you're the one. <laughs> yeah, it was Falls Park. And they went to me, what, me? You're the eye woman. Yeah. <laughs> And now you walk in and people think... They only recognise you because they've now had it done and they can see. Exactly. (laughs) But people think, you've never heard it before. Where do you want to be? You want to be be at Connolly's of my... I know. Yeah. I was singing that on the way here. (laughs) Like, you've got a very sad life. It's, oh my God, I do it, Pamela. It's such a catchy shit. Well, it could be worse. It could be the wheels and the bus go round and round. No, Which will be coming to you soon. It is. No, it is already. Um, It's all the stuff from Toy Story now at the minute. But I wanted to say to you about like because there's so many like plays and shows and sketches and things that are made locally and on BBC and I and in the Opera House and you know theatre wise and your name or Frank Mitchell's name or Barbara West's name is mentioned in so many productions yeah like so many productions a play I did a few uh, years ago you were like the, the one of the characters storyline the whole way through it was that she wanted to meet Pamela Valentine <laughs> Like, what way do you feel about that? Are you like, would you even stop talking about me in oh, these gosh, shows? No, I love it. Are you I mean, flattered? Yeah, yeah, totally flattered. I mean, this. I've always said, people say, oh, do you not mind? Or do you not? So long as people aren't rude. And the majority yeah. of time, they're not. It's done in a loving way, which is great. Yeah. And it, that, you know, it, it's, it's really, really nice to yeah. hear those sort of things. And it is really flattering. And I said, could be worse. They could not be talking about you. Exactly. No, that's true. Yeah. So no, I, I I think it's an absolute hoot, and but it's also funny whenever I'm in the audience, right? And then and everyone looks at you. And pe- yeah. Yeah. And possibly you know meet them have time and or after the show and they like, didn't know you were here. <laughs> I, I was the voice of God in the lyric for I think it was the nativity what the donkey saw, for right? Grimes McKay Grimes a few McKay. years ago, and uh, God as we know is a woman yeah. anyway. So I was God in this production, and as we were getting up to go out at the interval, this guy behind me sneezed. And I turned around, as I was doing, just go, bless, bless you. you. And he went, Jesus, I've just been blessed by God. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And I've been all, <laughs> I'm Satan. <laughs> um, but that's mad because, so the latest show that I'm writing, or that I have written Bridesmaids in Northern yeah. Ireland about this year, I was like, wanting to have this, like a local character on it. And I was all, should I give Pammy a break? Because she's on every... <laughs> as a God lover, she's mentioned... And I didn't know it, so I've um, targeted Frank Mitchell instead. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Because it was, he'll like that because he's not on the telly anymore. Yes. So he needs all the publicity. Oh, that is bless him. such a dig. <laughs> that is below the belt. <laughs> okay, no, people thought Frank and I were married. Did they? Because we worked together you for were like 10 TV, years. Yeah, TV couple. Yeah, and it, but I nagged him so much. Oh, really? I mean, he just... He, and he freely admits it. He, he is... You know, he would come in and sit down and go... Right, what's on the program now? And this is like five minutes on air. I went, read your bloody script and you'll know what's going on. What or, an absolute skiver. Oh, I mean, but he, oh, he was busy doing something else. Aye, sure know? he was. That's yeah. a man, isn't it? So I've just been having my lunch. I couldn't read at the same time. 
Just been going <laughs> to the toilet. I couldn't do anything else. Um, Frank and you together have not aged a day in like oh, the past that's very kind. 10, 15 years. Although somebody did put, I, and, and I, I'm slagging Frank off again, but he did appreciate it. Somebody sent a photograph in of Frank and me at Pride. Uh, and Only he had aged. And, and <laughs> said, Jesus thought it was Pommy's dad. Oh, shit. <laughs> so I said Frank. But then I but, thank Lou. But it is. No, it bless him. And, but he, Frank, and Frank has always lied about his age. Right. And freely admitted and uh, as one of our bosses said, well, how will you believe a man about his age if he lies about his name? Does he lie about his name? Francis, Frank is Francis McClory. Oh, we are getting all the goss <laughs> on Frank Mitchell right now. Yeah. What a mouthpiece. Yeah. What is he called? Oh, no, but he, but he, he freed, it's, it's all, it's in various newspaper articles and whatever. Francis McClory. So where would Frank Mitchell come from? He, he was working on pirate radio down in Dundalk many years ago. And the boss said, and he was doing discos and, you know, Francis McClory does not exactly trip off the tongue. So no. Frank sort of came round yeah. from that. That's what, yeah. And then he was going through albums, I think, and and came across, uh, I think it was maybe a Johnny Mitchell album. And he went, oh, that works well. So that's how that's, Frank Mitchell was born. That is crazy. But that is like, so people, I was going to say people don't do that now, but then oh, they do. Like, yeah, people I mean, of every, course they do that now. now. Yeah, yeah. But, but also we had a great guy like who worked, worked and... with us. <laughs> Oh, God, like, you know, he's now or God rest him. Sorry. I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, he's not yeah, like yeah, he was he was a symbol. But no, one of our editors said to Frank one day when he was telling the story, he said, just as well, the album you picked up wasn't the Sex Pistols, never mind the bollocks. Because that could have been a different story in Diary. <laughs> oh my god, I cannot believe it. So so let's go let's now target him about his age. The old bastard. <laughs> what age is he? Frank, I think, is a year younger than me. Right. So um, many hundreds of years ago on UTV, Mike Nesbitt was still working yeah. on UTV. Mike went to the bother of getting a copy of Frank's birth certificate from the public Mike record office. Mike is a psychopath. Mike Pam is. I've known Mike since we were teenagers and he is an absolute hoot. Right. And he went to the bother and he came and sat down on the sofa with me and Frank and went, look. What? How did he get so, it? Extortion? <laughs> to, to, I mean, by asking Frank the right questions in conversations over a few days. Oh my God, what a genius. He got his mother's maiden name. He got the, and, and if you've got enough information, you can go and get a copy from the public record I cannot office. imagine a conversation with someone where they ask my mother's maiden name yeah. and I don't get suspicious. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so so he's so he's pretending he's younger, obviously, rather than pretending he's older. Yes. Oh. But I'm not going to start adding 10 years on so people tell me I look fantastic well, that's for my a, age. That's a great tactic. Yeah. I, I used to have to pretend I was younger or older for different roles where you'd be mm. like, let's... Or do you know what? Actually, the main thing is I have to lie. I usually lie about my height. Right. Because I like, but all, I'm only five foot... I'm like five foot ten and a half, but uh -huh. my agent was all, let's and pretend... And that half is so important. Let's pretend you're like five foot nine uh -huh. just because five foot ten and a half is a wee bit scary for uh -huh. men. Yeah, true. Because I'm, I'm five foot four and a wee bit. And that, Although I think he, I'm now down, I'm down to the five foot four, I think. I think five foot four and a wee bit is, uh, the wee bit is important when you're five foot four. It's yeah. not important when you're five foot ten. You're no. trying to get rid of that wee bit. Yeah. You're like, I don't want that uh -huh. wee bit. Do you wear high heels? No. And I used to until I married someone who was the same height as me. Mm -hmm. And if I, my, a pair of heels will emasculate him, demasculate him, whatever the word That's is, what he wants in to a go second. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> He wants to go camping so we can just be like, Ooh, man stuff. <laughs> yeah. If I wear a pair of high heels, I can no longer see him and I get a nosebleed. <laughs> no, but in photographs, I'm like, you stand in front of me now. I'm like, get stand in front of me now because the, the perspective will make you seem taller. Yeah. <laughs> um, can I talk about the first, so the first, my first professional play that I ever did that I got paid to do madness was the vagina man looks we'd mentioned it before we started recording um that you were in and that i was in but that i was brought in to replace you for i think maybe one or two shows yeah i think we're a couple of shows um at the theater at the mill so you were doing that with olivia nash and the first couple first performances were with carol dewey yeah uh, in Kirkstown <clears throat> in the bernavan and then linda Bryans took over from Carol, Linda, Linda was meant to be doing it, but she couldn't do the first run, so Carol did it as well. And I have, to, it was the best experience because I, I am not by any shape nor make an actress comfortable on stage. I love auto cue. I loved, I mean, my, I started in, as a secretary in local radio and just started doing stuff on the radio from then. Give me an audience, yeah, freak, yeah, yeah, freak out, and learning lines as well. 
Yeah. So when I did the pantomime all those hundreds of years ago, that was a real eye opener. But then coming. Where did you do the pantomime? In the Grand Opera House. Oh, did you? With Cannon and Ball. I was the fairy godmother. Oh my God. With Cannon and we Ball. And of course, Mamie Fetridge. And yeah, I had to take time off work. Um, but so, like, it is so much. Oh, totally. Panto was like crazy. Yeah. And, and you got jet lag. Yeah. Because you. you come off stage. Going from Lenadin, do you? Yeah, well, court, court, yeah, court so 11, center. you'd come off stage. And then you'd have your party. And, you know, you'd oh, yeah. go out. And so you weren't going to bed until about half three, four o'clock in the morning. And you were getting up at half 11 yeah. to be in for the half past 12 call for the half past for one the kids performance. Show. Yeah. And, and it was just so when that finished, you know, going back to trying to get go to bed on the same day you got up. Yeah. Um, was it was it, never going to happen. Never going to happen. It's a lot. But it was great. I loved it. It was brilliant fun. Yeah. And I was so well looked after. I have never done proper panto. I mm. used to always want to do it. And then I got to the stage. I was like, actually, I don't think. Because it's like, because the amount of actors I know that were like, by like week three, I have to speak my songs because yeah. my throat is completely bollocks. Uh-huh. I'm no longer able to sing. I'm just like going like in Cinderella just like whispering the songs because yeah. you can no longer sing like I don't I don't know if I can and they've even gone longer now because we you, and you only had two weeks rehearsal and then I think it was a six week performance it, we, in the opera house now it, it's like yeah, like 11 it's, or 12 it's yeah, wild it's taken over the entire world yeah um but, but it, and it really but it's a brilliant training ground yeah for because the the actors who were playing like Cinderella she wasn't a well known person but she was brilliant crack and yeah. I mean the fun that we had and I have to say Cannon and Ball and Mae McFetridge looked after me superbly mm-hmm. I mean, and it, they were so kind oh, and good. so good they were really really lovely and then doing the vagina monologues with the queen of Northern Ireland theatre Olivia, Olivia Nash. Nash I mean what a privilege and the story she told I'll never forget the first night backstage absolutely bricking it you know you or her all all of us us. we were just sort of it's a rehearsed reading but Carol was great because it was her home theatre and she sort of told us so we were going right ready ready and then at the start there's a piece of Eve Ensler who wrote it yeah. The film played explaining the whole thing out and then you come on stage and it was you know you do your rehearsal bits and and you do read your do your readings. Um, by about week six, Olivia's telling us stories from her theatre days that are an absolute hoot. Yeah. And suddenly we'd hear the music and we'd go, shit, we're, we're on. on. <laughs> and come running on because you just got so relaxed into it. But it was great. I remember Olivia. So the show that I did, the, Olivia, it was a theatre at the mill and Olivia came in and handed me, if anyone who doesn't know Olivia, she's Ma, from, she plays Ma from Give My Head Piece, famously. She came in and handed me this wee like black tablet and she like slid it across the dressing table to me and she was all there you go love and I was all what's that what are we doing <laughs> What I'll do it but what is it <laughs> and she was like it's a wee nerve tablet suck it in your mouth she was I, I, uh-huh. I put it in my mouth and I, when I go on stage and I just leave it in my uh-huh. mouth and I just suck at it every now and then and apparently it's like it's like chamomile uh-huh. or you know like sort of yeah. whatever relaxing agent and she was like and I'll take it on stage and I because I was shitting myself as well uh-huh. it was my first like proper production and I remember being like I can't believe that Olivia Nash is still nervous going out on stage all is well with the world yeah totally I and, be and she was so generous with her time as well and but <laughs> my wee sister said never again when she came to see me, she said, there are some things in life I never wish to experience again. And one of them is watching my sister fake an orgasm yeah. on stage. Pammy, I was on stage, <laughs> right, and had to perform various different orgasm noises. I yes, remember I like, did that bit. Just yep. like a, yep. Because I, I, I was doing yep. your bits. Yes, yeah, so it was all these different uh-huh. sounds and noises for orgasms. And I looked out into the front row and there's my da. Oh, great. Looking at his shoes. Uh-huh. Just like not less like counting his toes, just like I can't look up, I can't look up. My mommy was sitting there being all like, "Keep going, it's all right. He's not looking. He's not looking at you." Well, Paddy Keelty said, even "Worse, he was listening to his wife making noises he recognised." Oh, he said, oh, "Oh, she's a great actress." <laughs> Oh well, yes. I'm glad I didn't know Sean back then. <laughs> <laughs> That's even worse. Uh-huh. I know, but I I could like I was only maybe about twenty, and I remember thinking my dad is sat there listening to me make mm-hmm. orgasm noises, and I want to die, mm-hmm. but I'm being paid 150 pound a night, so I'm just going to keep going. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and he taught me to. Oh well, no. <laughs> That sounded so dark. <laughs> that is not what I meant. I don't think we were able to go there. Yes. Shall we move on? <laughs> that is not what I meant. Whatever. Christ in a bag. 
and a, a good old phrase from my school days: full on beamer there. Nice. Full one. on beamer. Yeah. Is Beamer a thing? I thought Beamer was a bit dairy thing. So, well, I, will, I, will, I know people take Beamer yeah, elsewhere. Take but full on Beamer. Yeah. Mm. Um, so you started in news, right? But cause well, I started as a secretary. Oh, yes, that's mm-hmm. right. Was it in, in downtown? Mm-hmm. But I, oh, shit, I did a spot. There goes your coffee. coffee. Well, at least it's not over any of the equipment or your phone. You're fine. We'll sort that out after. It'll be a nice iced um, coffee by the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dan, bring in the cloth. <laughs> <laughs> It's to drill up your slabbers or clean up your slabbers. <laughs> That's from the inside of the tent. So, <laughs> whenever you d- were reading the news, like it, it strikes me, like you're far too good a crack to be reading the news. Do you know what I mean? Like, did they, were you, what, were you doing the well, news? You see, I was desperately like, shy at school. I didn't speak until I went to school in England for a year. And, and I had to force myself to speak. Um, so, I, that's why I, I mean, audiences and me just, I, you know, I do what I, like I've been asked to do after dinner speaking. Yeah. Flatly refused. Oh, really? Totally. Um, there are people who are brilliant at it. Uh, and I just, no. I mean, I like telling stories. I like chatting. Um, even doing, you know, I'm asked to go and address colleges or whatever yeah. about my career path. And I'm going, well, I didn't exactly have one, you know, sort of started work sort of at the happened. age of 19 and, and here I am. And it's, it's. It, it's it's just also I think is their, their the language facts. you're speaking yeah. about your like route into your career they wouldn't understand now because no. they would be like but when did you start your TikTok account like yeah. at what point what, what did you point, yeah get did you viral? discover Insta well, yeah. Yeah, like my mate which hashtags were you using me into Insta you, know, like, you need it yeah so, um so that's why I'm, I'm only I, don't, I was on Facebook for ages and but I never did it, anything with it and yeah. I remember going on one day I must have a look and I had 4,780 emails of friend requests and I went even that you're calling them emails yeah but they were emails, emails at the time oh on yeah. your emails yeah. sorry they were yeah. look at me trying to look burn me. you too yeah. and it was, I was like <laughs> yeah. um, and you know photographs of your know, profile pictures of men completely bollock naked from you know neck down and, and going, what were their names yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, I would say trade descriptions would have been um, called in, um, <laughs> or in full camouflage gear with rifle. Well, uh, in your show, yeah. yeah. Um, so you know, I just I thought, oh, do you know what? If anybody wants to get in touch with me, I'm yeah. not hard to find. No. So I just deleted Facebook account. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm, I'm on Twitter and I'm on Instagram, and that that suits me. And I can find Twitter can be very cruel. Yeah. And, and horrible, like all, all social media can, but it's just giving the bullies an outlet to to bully people and just ignore them and don't. But how respond. do you do you ever see things? Because I don't really oh, see yeah. anything bad about. Do you see things? Okay, about but it's funny. I mean, I'm I'm coming from the days I used to get letters of hate. People people would write. They would go to the bother of buying a stamp, stamp. and going to a letter box in That's the days how before the angry internet. they were. About you know, I mean, I'll never, and and it's one thing, and it's in the human psyche. Yeah, you can have fifty messages saying how wonderful you are, and one detractor. You can't remember the fifty nice messages. No. the one detractor is the one that sticks in yeah. your brain. Yeah, yeah, it's so sad. But I, for me, as the years have gone by now, that one doesn't even stick in my head anymore. It used to, but now to the and it's not even a positive thing. I think I'm now at the point where I'm I'm completely numb to anything anybody says online, good or bad, uh-huh. to the point where I sometimes don't know where the line is of offence anymore. Yeah. Because I'm like, well, I'm so hard to offend because I you can't say anything that'll hurt my feelings. Uh-huh. So when but- I say things sometimes, and somebody'll be all, oh, you shouldn't say that, and they'll be all. Oh, is that a bad thing to say? Uh, I, someone said it to me. But ma- yeah, but if you imagine, say, somebody says something derogatory about your family, yeah, that's when the hackles that's, will come up. And yeah. if you sort of say it and think of it, somebody was saying it about your family or about some, you know, be close to you. That's a good that's, way of looking at it. Yeah, that that would that's a good scale of how at it. how dead am I inside? That that's how you <laughs> have to look at things. <laughs> like, no, somebody was right. saying that about my no, brother. But, but you do bring up that you. Everybody yeah. has to bring up their own defenses. Like my my wee sister and I were. Um, you know, growing up, I, there's five and a half years difference between us. There's a year between me and my brother. Brother and I were really close. I was a tall She's the same age as Frank Marshall. And, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Su- Susie and I, you know, she was the wee pain of the sister. Yeah. You know, I was 10, she was five. So she wanted to follow every. But anyway, best of buddies now. But we slag each other off. And it's the Northern Ireland default setting of sarcasm. And the more sarcastic we are or, you know, throw a wee jig into you, the, the more we like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then if somebody comes along and tries to take a side, 
the two of us are round on yeah. them. How so dare you? How dare you? And yeah. then it's like, oh, oh, sorry. I know. You know. It's like, um, I remember growing up in this woman and who, who lived in our street. She used to be like, this, the, like the wee kids run around here and they're bikes and they're like making the place a mess and they're spray painting on the walls and the wee shites and all, not a GCSE between them. And I remember one day the postman saying, I know, they're wee ball bags. Because she was like, excuse the fucking hey, hey, heck you are. <laughs> kids in the street of the salt of the earth. You know what I mean? <laughs> They've had a hard time, hard paper right? How you do and that's the thing. It's like we'll slag our own. Yeah. Don't you come don't, onto don't our street dare. and say anything yes, about us? Exactly. I know. Uh-huh. That's just how we are. Completely. Um do you this is such a random question, but it's only because I had a mad dream last night. Oh good lord. Do you I'm worried now. Do you dream much? Like at night? Barking mad dreams. Do you? Totally barking mad dreams. And can and you I'm... relate mad dreams to no. something happening that day? No. No, I am really bad. But before going to bed, I, I channel hop on the telly, read a book. So your mind's like... Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I read on my Kindle. So the brain is going... And I love Overdrive. thrillers. If it's got gratuitous sex and violence, I'm in. Same. Can't wait for the new That's House f- of Dragons series coming on the prequel to Game of Thrones starting next week. Are the dragons having sex in it? There's, well, there's 17 dragons in this At the same time? And, a dragon orgy? I mean, it's... I, I, Beyond, but there's going to be so much violence and mayhem. It's going to be wonderful, right? Um, so, Pamela, you're it, a sick person. <laughs> is it any wonder they have strange dreams? Like, yeah. they, I stayed at a mate's house the other night. We were out for dinner, and uh, I, the next morning I was saying, "Hi, Trump." We were trekking through a wood, and her cousin, who's a singer, was there with mm-hmm. one of his bandmates, and and then there was this fox that was coming with us, and then it started. We were getting close. Turned out it had cubs, and it was then trying to attack us. And it was like, and then there were other people coming in trying to attack us over the hills, and we were all running for our life. And I went, "What? Did you go for a sleep after that?" I, I mean, I, I woke up and I went, "Chief, <laughs> would you ever wake up and ha- you're having a lovely dream, and then you wake up and go, no. I the and then you try to go back to sleep and finish the, the amount of the times dream. Sean has had, yes you want to go back and finish yeah. the nice dream the amount of time Sean has had to wake me up because I'm either pissing myself laughing or crying in my sleep mm-hmm. like I have he has a video of me laughing my head off in my sleep and I'm like that is fantastic but I used to have this oh, I still have it like it's not, I wouldn't say it's a reoccurring dream but it's definitely a regular dream and I had it last night which is why I'm saying to you but so like there's two of my mum and I'm, I'm in the house that I grew up in like when I was a, when I was wee wee, and in the kitchen, and there's like two of my mum there, and one of them has a massive inflatable head, but it's still my. But they're both, and there's a it's like a game show, it's like Family Fortunes, and there's a host there, and there, he's like there's an audience behind me, and they're asking questions so I can figure out which one's my ma, because if I don't figure it out, they're both gonna get killed. Do you watch Squid Game? I have, but I don't continue to watch it. Yeah. Check it out. No, but I was having, but I've had this dream years. Right. And then I keep going to the downstairs bathroom and all and talking to myself in the mirror and trying to get the questions right and I go back out and they might ask me stuff like what's your middle name and I'll be all Barbara but it's not and I'm yeah. getting it wrong and I'm like these ones are going to die. But, but yeah, yeah. But, uh, th- those are sort of like stress dreams. It's like, you know, I, I used to have a stress dream of uh, reading the news and being the qualified secretary that I am, I touch type. Right. So, but Who else I, do you type? Um, you, but, but without looking. Oh, right. It's that. like surely yeah. you need no, to. That, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. touch typing. Right. But somebody had touch typed the news, but their fingers were key over. So oh. instead of Q, the type W, instead of E, that's t- type R. R, T, you know, that, so, and, and I'm a five minutes to go before the news and I'm trying to translate it. <gasps> and, and the clock's counting down and I can't get to, and it's just those stru- like I'm having stress, anxiety. Like, yeah. Thinking totally of that. Stress, work, dream. But what a rain man thing to be able to do if you were able to like read that and be like, uh-huh. see everything one, yeah. one key over. Yeah. That would be like that's a that's that'd a, be a superpower. That would be an absolute superpower. Yeah. If you could have a superpower, what would it be? Oh. I don't. I, I think flight. I think I would like to fly, unlimited air miles. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Pe- people say First invis- class. visibility. I mean, no, I don't think I wanted. No, visibility. because I'd be t- I'd be so nosy that I'd yes. go places that would upset me. Yeah, Mum always used to say about me. She said, it's not that you're nosy; you just like to know everything. Yeah. Um. So I think maybe flight. Um, would would do me, yeah. I would love to. Like I already have a full bullshit detector, but I would love for to know ex- like when people are lying. 
uh-huh. do you reckon for like just go to no say the truth and they have to say the exact truth and it yeah. comes out because then you would just I mean nobody can lie to you which is which is unreal but on saying that there then I think then you would be like if someone's you're like oh did you enjoy the gig and you're all you were shite and you're yeah. all okay should have yeah. should have should have gone should have chosen the visibility <laughs> <laughs> about half an hour ago yeah yeah that's the wrong one shouldn't have yeah. bothered um, so when, as I'm saying, but whenever you were doing the news, because obviously that's a, such a straight thing, yeah. such a great personality, were, were they like, let's leave that to Donald Trader and give... Well, no, because the new <laughs> part of the job, because the continuity announcers in UTV, you, it, we filled it, and it was days before autocue. So first thing we had to do in the morning was five minutes straight to camera about what was coming up in the day ahead. Right. Um, <clears throat> and we could pick clips. You, you were The day before, you were be able to get clips of like 30 seconds so it's like coming up on Emmerdale tonight there's someone 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 and then they'd show a clip all the continuity so, stuff yeah, con- all the continuity yeah. stuff so we'd five minutes of that in the morning before schools programs came on right and then you'd two and a half hours of just sitting hoping the things didn't fall down and then you'd have to make the announcement which we apologise ladies and gentlemen but they break down in uh, transmission so you're sat there service. live and so you're happens. sitting there yeah yeah we used to have to read the commercials live at Christmas they were you know the 10 second slides that would come up they, they were the cheapy ads Bye. Um, so you had to do those live. Who, and if who, you, if who you, went for those cheapy ones? W- quite a lot of people. So, uh, but, and the most you were allowed in any commercial break was six. So ads? Th- that's a minute. Mm. That you can't make a mistake in a script. Aye. Because if you make a mistake, they don't pay for the ad. <gasps> so the one that always sticks in my mind, which I have put out before, Bishop's Sensational Shoe Sale starts Saturday. That is a talent. That was a good one. And then it continued on. And then a friend of mine had a mate in Ballymena who worked in Benetton. But he called it Benetton. Right. So we, and I know it's Benetton. Mm-hmm. Is he from Ballymena? But and he was Ballymena. Is he Ballymena? Right. Well, Ballymena. Just and your I'm going, right, flawless. But, but, okay. Benetton, 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 Benetton. Benetton sale starts. You, yeah. you had to keep going, because otherwise Benetton was coming You're never going to say it properly? No. Have you but, ever said one's wrong on air and then they wouldn't pay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, if you just fall over it. Yeah. So then they don't get paid. Exactly. So, but the news reading was just part of it. Like yeah. Julian did news. And straight sport. news but that's the thing and if Julian yeah. reads the news I would I'd be like when is he yeah. going to I, mean, I, I was once sent down to the courthouse to do a, a story on, on a court case and I mean it was a mean thing to do because that was not my forte I would, never did hard news as a reporter yeah. I read it but I never had to actually yeah. report on it and I just said to the boss I said listen this is gonna, not going to come across well and I think he was trying to prove a point at the time, but that was another story. Um, and I said, people are definitely going to be waiting for the punchline. Yeah. If I'm standing there going, yeah. mm-hmm, and? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, boom, turned out to be Santa Claus. Hey! That's it. Uh, but, so I never, and, and and I think he twigged that that was possibly, it was a bad idea to have sent me down there. Do you know why I find that being in comedy too? <clears throat> that a lot of the time, if you're like trying to be serious about something, that people just think that there's yeah. a punchline coming up. Yeah. Or that you just sometimes you'll just give them on anyway and you're all that was meant to be a really serious talk about like uh, like whatever it is then you're all da 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 you just yeah. try to make it funny at the end you're all that's the wrong tone uh-huh. why am I doing that yeah I feel like people just expect that yeah. all because the time. You can, I mean it's it's like interviewing a comedian yeah but you're great to interview because you've got so many strings to your bow yeah but a full stand up comedian yeah you know, are you worried if you interview you a comedian on totally, the show? Yeah, always. Everyone's so worried about. Because, like even the radio shows are yeah. so worried about putting comedians on air uh-huh. to either interview or as presenters because mm-hmm. they're like, oh, they're gonna fuck this up. Yeah, they're gonna curse. You, they're gonna. But, and it, but it's not so much that it's you know it's where, where do you, you you can't say to a comedian so tell me about your show. Well, it's full of jokes. Yeah, I know. Or it's right. You what know, can you say? Uh-huh. I don't know. And it's. You know, it's it's difficult, so it's always nice to find out something about going, you know, doing good research is is sort of the the key to it. Is there anyone you interviewed and you were like starstruck over the years? I, I don't know about starstruck. Um, Have you interviewed anyone who's a really dickhead. Oh, I've, I've yeah. Out them now. Besides um, Frank Mitchell, that <laughs> bastard. <laughs> <laughs> no, Frank's always a don't. Um, no, Frank and I, I we, we just... I together this year. I was just going, Frank the prick. Yeah. Frank's no, Fra- Frank and I just end up whenever we are... Because I still go on his radio show yeah. every Friday to talk about the programme. And we just end up in hysterics. Uh, just talking about stupid stuff. I mean, just, you know, 
like you know, silly things. Like, yeah, how he said, lies about he his said, age. Yeah, what have you got on tonight? I said, well, actually, I was thinking of a little white off the shoulder number with. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, yeah. but uh, no, there was a guy. It was it was years and years ago on downtown, and he was a playwright. And it was so long ago, the Arts Theatre was open um, in Botanic, uh, and this guy, he was a very ser- serious playwright. And uh, I was asking him about his play, and you're taught, you know, you ask who, what, where, why, yeah. when, so that you're not going to get mm, yes, haha, no yeah, yeah, yeah. answers. Uh, but he was just being obtuse, and he just was not interested. And after about a minute, I went, "Well, thank you very much indeed for for coming in and joining us. You've been and, mediocre." And, and I and literally, it was a minute long, and and. The producer came around. Oh, what are you doing? I mean, this guy was he was world famous playwright. Yeah. I said, well, he obviously. Does. And by this stage, there was a record on. I said, well, he obviously that? doesn't want to be here. So why should I waste his time any longer yeah. for? Yeah. Doing, you know, for not wanting to answer. I'm not telling you. Uh, and uh, sure, he came back. Oh, 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 oh sorry. I, I was just thinking somewhere else. So he came back afterwards and he played ball. Because uh, I thought I'm not going to sit through purgatory. No. I also the Stranglers. I was interviewing them one year, and Jean Jacques Brunel was effing and blinding throughout the entire interview. And I said, "Listen, this can't, it's not usable. This we can't use this. No, you know, and you we can either not do the interview, or you can wise up. Yeah. And his bandmates, you know, so and he was a wee lamb afterwards. Do you think that there's a wee bit of sexism sometimes in the Ooh. men who are being interviewed yeah. by a woman? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, so they're I like was... not willing to give you much or they're a wee bit like yeah. put I mean, out I'm... because you're the, one, you're the one in the position of power as the interviewer, yeah. aren't there? I mean, yeah. I have been called a bimbo by a, by an interviewee before. I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it. Yeah. And, and, and you just go, okay. And to your face. To my face, yeah. And the producer stepped in and went, that's the end of the interview. Pamela, come with me. <gasps> And the man followed us. It was in farming. And the man followed us round the entire day. And was, oh, I'm ready to do that interview now. And the producer went, no, you were too rude. We're not having you on the programme. Wow. What a cheeky shite. <laughs> Probably shags a sheep, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was Clement Freud. Yeah. Who uh, was liberal spokesman for Northern Ireland at the time. Now, I just was just chatting and said, are you in Northern Ireland often? Yeah. And that's when he said bimbo because he was the liberal spokesperson for Northern Ireland. And it was just, it was for sound level. Yeah. It wasn't even in the interview. Yeah. You're all right. I was on the radio one time. This is we're talking about comedians, like <clears throat> being like dodgy on air. But this is before I was a comedian. And I was on Blast 106. And it was the first radio station I'd ever been on for an interview. I was on for an interview, but it, in my, even the memory of it now, yeah, I feel like I was on this show that wasn't really a show and it was like, maybe like at midnight, it was like really late and I was all, no one's asked, like, and I didn't even, re- had never even heard of Blast 106 and somebody from my comedy group had played a prank on me and was like, no, you can curse on radio and like at this time and all, you can, it's like after nine o'clock, it's watershed and I said the word fuck on air and I remember the complaints, like immediately after I said it, the guy like went, oh, which, like went on to a song, whatever, and was all, what are you doing to be cursing on air? And I was all, surely you can say fuck, it's midnight, it's all set for nine. And he was all, no, and I was all, I am so sorry, you're about uh-huh. to get fired. Well, at least you knew people were listening. Yeah, well, yeah. The, well, the complaints came from people who worked there, and I still yeah, don't think okay. anyone was listening, <laughs> <laughs> like at all. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um. So, do, what is your favorite thing to do then? Like, I know you, you, you TV life's your baby, and has been for how long is that? That's run for like well, it's it's been it so long on, break, on and off. Yeah, because yeah. we Frank and I did it for ten years, and then it came off air, and then um, it was you know when UTV had all its reshuffle and the redundancies and whatever, yeah. and and um, a load of us went, um, but I was kept on freelancing. Yeah, and then it must have been after about a year or so of freelancing, they. They brought said, look, do you fancy, you know, we need, we'd like to do a, this for about six weeks or so. And then since and that then? was, I think, six years ago. Oh, really? Yeah. Six do they have ago. any sort of, do they understand time? Yeah, well, <laughs> no, but it's suiting me down to the ground. It's just, it's just it's to say <laughs> But it used to be on nightly, wasn't it? With you and Frank? Yeah, it was on every every night, half past five. So was this during the same time as Frank was doing school around the corner? Yeah, he would have been, do, yeah, would have been doing that. What a great get. Yeah. And he had both shows, and he had. Uh, he was also doing 
not Ultimate Ulster, or was it Ultimate Ulster? So it's like a top 10 of things in right. Ulster, you know, top 10 castle, top 10 yeah. days out, top 10 whatever. Um, so what is your favourite thing to do? Do you enjoy hosting, like live hosting? Or do you prefer the show? Like I, this, I this really kind of... enjoy the live yeah. stuff. But I also enjoy, and I know it sounds like a cliche, but I really enjoy meeting people. And yeah. Not necessarily famous people, you know, people from all walks of life who have a story done, to tell or you know, something amazing. interesting. There's, there's, I've always tell the story of a lady I met hundreds, well, not hundreds, hundreds of, of years long, ago. Long, long Pamela. Ago. Yes. You and she, Frank are about her But this lady called uh, Vera McGee from Armagh, and she was in her 80s, and she had the most amazing story to tell. As a child, um, her both her parents had died when she was 12, and she was put into a, a convent as an orphan. And because of the trauma, she had wet the bed, and as a punishment, she was made to sleep in a cell with a dying nun, and it was oh. just, it was awful. Um, and then at the age of 16, because she had a penchant for languages, she could speak Irish and, and English, They uh, it was uh, about 1937 or so, she was given a sovereign and put on the train and sent to France as a governess. And she said the furthest she'd ever been before was on the back of the milk cart. So she was sent off there. And there were various things happened. But yeah. while she was there, of course, 1937, 38, war broke out and she was in occupied France. But because she had an Irish passport, she just had to report to the Gestapo every week. And then when um, MacArthur's troops came in and liberated the area, she was then brought in as a translator while they interrogated the railway staff who watched the transportation wagons going through to the concentration camps. So she was an English translator? She was an English translator, yeah. so and French when it, and and her most then she never came back to Northern Ireland. That's a movie. She, she was amazing. And she went to the British consul in Strasbourg afterwards and she finally came back to Northern Ireland in her eighties and couldn't understand why nobody would give her a mortgage. Oh, uh, she, she was, was like, just, what, what so, the and hell? she flirted with my cameraman and uh, she was just one of life's amazing people. And the Clintons were over in Northern Ireland and they presented her with the American Medal of Honour for the work that she did for the war effort in France, whenever she was there. She was an incredible lady. Do you ever incredible. hear, for me anyway, I hear a story like that and I'd be like... I've done next to piss all today to contribute yeah. to the world. I've done two loads of washing. Yeah. <laughs> I've done this podcast uh -huh. and that's it. It uh -huh. changed two dirty nappies. Like, that's amazing. Like, I think like some, sometimes you hear people, like, it's like the, the Pride of Britain Awards or yeah. the, do you know, the... the Would you see what I'm doing? Oh, flipping I know, egg. I know. We're at Spirit of Northern Ireland. I know. I mean, I've, I've on stage, is a packet of tissues, um, lipstick... And, and powder. Yeah. Because I'm going and to be that's a, a blubbering wreck by the time that's And that's like finished. how how humbling to be uh, like on stage people are doing like heroic things and you're yeah. like, I am. Um, I mean, I'm I've, just I've doing cried jokes. In the news. I, I I remember crying. Um, when she was doing the news? Yeah. Cause it was the Oma Bomb funerals. Oh, geez, I. And, and I, I, I just couldn't. I mean, I, the reporter was live yeah. in, in Oma. And 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 come back to the studio, and there's Valentine do, having to continue to read on, and it was yeah yeah I mean it, 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 I suppose that's the thing about if you're doing do, news, you have to cover light and shade like yeah, you have to do exactly but, yeah. and and you know I mean I know I wasn't alone, but you're sort of going oh, this isn't very professional, but nobody said diddly squat no so, it's it's human isn't it yeah and um, before we finish, do you have a remember when did I tell you yeah yeah and and it's a weird one um. I mean, I've, I've, I was because I was thinking back about right what sort of has made a, what made an impact to me, and it was just one word that was said in a movie, and it was in 1982, and the movie was an officer and a gentleman, right, and as you know, I, not backwards about coming forwards when it comes to language, and could use the odd profanity myself. Uh -huh. And Richard Gere turned to one of the actresses and his character called her a see you next Tuesday. And it was the first time I'd ever heard that word. As in see. Yeah, a mm. cunt. <laughs> you can yeah. say it on this podcast, don't worry. No, but, but, it's not, but even having done the vagina monologues, still find difficulty saying it. Right. Um, and, and I remember going, whoa. And it was the most powerful thing that I'd ever heard in a film. Yeah. Because she was. Yeah. And she deserved it. And it was the only word that would really describe. Total. Yeah. His feeling. And, and it was said with such 
venom. Yeah. And I heard afterwards that it actually wasn't rehearsed. And it was just... Just came out? It just came out. And now that may be because true. That's or not. The, I don't know. Because Richard never actually told me himself and never had dinner with him. You know. Oh, shut did, up, Pamela. Did I help dinner with Richard Beer? <laughs> never been dreams. starstruck just having dinner yeah, with Harry Richie. No, in my dreams, I would have. Oh, but that's yeah. the thing. Like, I, I find it so bizarre when people are so offended by curse words because I mm-hmm. think they're just syllables, they're just yeah. sounds, they're just like, it's the intent. Yeah. Like with the word cunt, I I love that word because I because especially here, here's the only place in the world where you can be a dead on cunt. Yeah. Uh-huh. But that's a term of endearment. Yeah. People are like, that's a, what a dead on cunt that is. Like, and that's a nice uh-huh. thing to say about somebody. And, and it's used frequently in, yeah. as, as, as sort of hyphenating a word. Yeah. And, and I mean, I, I, I def- definitely think Northern Ireland people and a lot of Scottish people yeah. can, you can listen to a whole sentence and suddenly realise there's been F's and C's and B's yeah. and, D's and, D's and, D's and you just went, do you know what? I never even twigged. No, because they weren't saying it in anger. Yeah. It was in description and in endearment yeah. and in all the other lovely ways. Yeah. That's why I will never like not curse because if someone goes, oh, that's really offensive. Whatever I was doing the blame game one time, mm-hmm. there was one or two fucks that got into the um, the edit. Um, they were Neil Delamere and Tim McGarry. And then, no, I'm only joking. That was me calling <laughs> them two fucks. But anyway, um, the there was one or two fucks made into the edit and I got like, slagged online mo- uh-huh. only by men who see, were that's, like uh-huh, yeah. that's another reason a why young I woman was, using yeah. that language is disgusting yeah. and the guys all came to my um, uh-huh. rescue like n- not my rescue I didn't need rescued but like Neil and Colin Murphy and everyone were like tweet, tweeting them going if you watch it again you'll realise we all said the word fuck but you've just chosen to highlight that Diona said it uh-huh. and that it was so unladylike and that it was you know gratuitous and unnecessary was like that was that's that's not sexist because, but if you go you know I as I said won't do after dinner speaking you know, people say oh, but you tell the best jokes and whatever and that, that. but I pick my audience and you know yeah. I will I will wait and see who is in my company before if, if, you know it's like somebody else says something you know okay then I can say something yeah, yeah, yeah. but the majority <laughs> of audiences are male dominated and they don't take it from women they don't no. like listening to women say bad words or tell stories or whatever they and occasionally have... you just throw one in and it just gives you a bit of a oh gosh that was yeah like trying you know if you've got a totally unruly audience I have done would you shut that fuck up, up. yeah and, and uh, there's the stunned silence and that gives you enough time to get the words in that you wanted yeah. to get in before they go bleh and it's Guys, like, like the planet Zanussi again they tell me be off of UTV just tell me to shut the fuck up yeah <laughs> I know it's wild because the amount of gigs I've been at and men have come over to me afterwards and went, I normally don't find women funny. Yes. But you were funny. Uh-huh. And like, that is. That is so backhanded, ready to. Yeah. You know, is that a yeah. compliment? No, that's not. Uh-huh. That's just slagging my entire gender. Like, exactly. That's yeah. Bananas. Yeah, I know. So, what you need in your audience is just like 300 dead on cons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for you to do yeah. your stuff in front of you. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because when the first time I went to see the vagina monologues and we didn't when we did the vagina monologues here yeah. we left that scene out and we actually had a discussion about it beforehand and it was you know it's a big scene where yeah. I, I saw it, with, it was three English actresses came over into the Grand Opera House doing the vagina mon- monologues and one of the scenes is you reclaim the cunt and you yeah. just shout uh, get the audience to shout it the number of people around me stared at me while I'm shouting cunt oh really and I thought, this is no, mm. this is no, this is the whole idea. You might be looking that way. With yeah, that, you you're know, like less than having an thing. argument with my yeah. sister. Would you leave me alone? And also the fact that it was, you know, me, Linda, Olivia, Carol, yourself. Audiences wouldn't take it from us. Yeah, they they're happy to take it from the themans across the water. Aye, but not ours. But not ours. No, Aye. we're not happy with you saying that. And we put we chose not to use that scene in vagina monologues. Well, because we did because of sensitivity. I suppose yeah, you'd lose some of the audience, yeah. but it's a, it's a, it's a sad way yeah. to be, isn't it? We we're like, oh, we have to censor uh-huh. ourselves a bit, or we'll lose we'll mm. lose half the audience. Yeah, you know. But then I think it's just in that theatre setting, I suppose too, because you go mm. out if you want to any other loving rooms, mm. they're all saying it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But we also <laughs> there was a thread we had a WhatsApp group, I think, or emailed whatever. And um, Sean, the producer, had asked us, the director had asked us to come up with words um, to describe, because everywhere in the world has different descriptions for the women's nether regions. Yeah. And we had to come up and send through different words that we have 
that we had heard. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just thought, if somebody has intercepted any um, of yeah. these messages, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, you know, twat, lady garden, yeah. camel's toe, VW bonnet, you know, all the VW they- bonnet. <laughs> My favorite is doot, and I actually have doot? a doot. I have a mug made up that I meant to bring with. Thank you for getting it mm-hmm. for the podcast that says the word doot on it. Doot is my favorite uh, word, let alone my favorite word for your doot. Uh, that's my favorite. Well, I did the moonwalk many years ago. There's with, a fun with, term for it as yeah, well. With, with, your with moonwalker. Fair <laughs> <laughs> enough. Uh, with, you can uh, make it anything. I was with Lorraine Kelly. So walking through Edinburgh, walking 26 miles in your bra. And it, it was a brilliant, brilliant event. And you, you start at midnight and finish. So about quarter to eight in the morning, we were busting for a wee. Yeah. And there are various wee stops along the way. Yeah. But there was always massive queues for port And it doesn't matter. I mean, the stench in a port just is not something. And it I'm stays sorry. in your or, off, yeah. orf tree factor, whatever it is, in your nose for the entire day. So Lorraine and I, we were just paying behind hedges, gravestones. Lions were like, yeah, Lions, whatever. <laughs> and we stopped this petrol station and the woman was just about, to, was opening up. She was, it was a quarter to eight. And we said, can we run in and use your leave, please? She says, uh, sorry, we're not open till eight o'clock. And we're going, seriously? Yeah. Bus. By eight o'clock, there'll be we a puddle of pests outside your door. Fo- we peed in the forecourt <gasps> behind an ice cream sign and you know, and petrol pumps. So, and Lorraine sort of stood like that. You know, Lorraine going. Kelly yeah. pissed at a petrol pump forecourt in Edinburgh. Yeah, well, well I'm having it. Well, she's, she's, she's doing this, keeping guard behind you in front. And then I took over. But as she turned around, she went, Oh, jeez, I've just seen Pamela Ballantyne's Nini. <laughs> and I just thought, Nini, there's a nice word. A nini, a nini. especially the Scottish accent. Yeah. <laughs> a nini. I can't believe Lorraine Kelly had her nini out in a forker. Uh-huh. That's bizarre. Um, listen, thank you so much for coming on. You've been an absolute an abso- pleasure. No, an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much indeed. Can you tell everyone when UTV Life is on each Friday? UTV Life is on every Friday night at seven o'clock. Yeah. Uh, and we're actually, if it's this is going out this week. Yeah, this Thursday. Perfect timing because we're doing a special. We're going. I'm going to Bangor to record at the Open House Festival and we're going to be chatting to Gary Lightbody. Oh, wow! So, uh, and he's such a lovely bloke. So you get to um, talk to me and, and Gary, Gary Lightbody, Lightbody in the know, one week? Wait till I tell Gary Lightbody I've been talking to you. Woo-wee! He will be past himself. You'll be knackered by the end of the week. <laughs> Thank you so And much. I'm also going to Conley's and Moy this week. Ah, uh, yes! Surfers. You had to get it done. <laughs> You've been paid for that today. <laughs> Thank you so much. Pleasure. Pleasure.